Oops, taser thing, but neither stand still to the cops. Battling on the front line. Taser! Taser! Our Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop out for impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Specialists in entry. <laughs> Search for ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers. On police! Show yourself now! Please show yourself, sir! And the crime stopping force <laughs> of the dog unit. Get down on the floor! Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. <laughs> because come at the hour. Yeah, Bass, we've still got him. Up on the back wheel, off side of the road. <laughs> come at the interceptors. Where are you from? Please, please, don't come to knock him again, will you? Coming up, you can either come and open this door now, or I'll put the door in and I'll arrest you. In the sights of a size 9 entry system. Got a failed start. A runaway golf is gone in 60 seconds. Well, what are industrial units on the side of the left of the stage? And objects in the mirror can be closer than they appear. It's a warm and sunny Friday afternoon in the city centre. But for the interceptors, the latest radio report is distinctly chilling. Several units are en route. Uh, do the ring road. Among them, armed response team Ian Coleman and Rob Ely. First and foremost, we've got to get to the area and... Uh and get this person uh, stopped and detained and stop him from doing anything else with his knife. So it's been given to taser authority, it's quite a few units going over and we'll uh, start off with a, a wide area search to try and locate this person. Take your next left. Oh, yeah. The firearms boys land at a scene swarming with mates from the knife crime team. Well, everybody's here. There's also fresh intel that the suspect has now disappeared into a property. The blade is clearly visible through the window. So while two units head round the back, Ian and Rob join Sergeant Matt Daly at the front. Do you want to open the door, mate, at the back? Matt's clocked someone. Go on then. Who heads to the back, good as gold, but he's not opening the door. Yeah, they're knocking, why aren't you answering? Come to the back door and show us that, please, otherwise we're going to have to force our way in. Come to the back door and open it for us then, so we can talk to you. Hey, buddy. Thank you. We'll speak to you through the door. He's not going to come, I don't think. The man's gone into the kitchen. And back at the front of the house, the cops reckon he's up to something. What are you doing? Why are you hiding that? They suspect he's disposing of drugs, so time is of the essence. Look, mate, we're going to put your door unless you can open the door for us. There's your two options. Mate, listen to me. You are matching the description of someone that's on the street in possession of a knife. So you can either come and open this door now, or we can speak about it, or I'll put the door in and I'll arrest you. Heavy metal fan Rob tackles criminals like a true hard rocker. Noisy, no nonsense, and with the volume cranked up to 11. Come to the door and open it, or go to the back door and open it. Leave them drugs alone. Put them back where they were. The suspect keeps stalling. They need to get in and fast. That door's gonna pop. Fortunately, the Sarge has a key. Go on, go on. Steel toe capped and size nine. It's not gonna go. Back to the go on, go on. Can he kick it? Yes, he can. Unsurprisingly, the chap is denying all accusations. Yes, you were. We just watched you. Of course, he was. 
Oh, you think we were born bloody yesterday, man? No, I wasn't. I just don't think you're going to stop, bro, is it? Yeah, because you've got a knife in the street, man. You're ripping a drug in your house. If he was, as they suspect, disposing of drugs in the kitchen, then it's fair to say he's missed a bit. What you got? Some pills. A load of pills. Or some description. Really? Some like drugs as well, so you go for Class A. That's not my business. Class A drugs as well, mate, right? That's not mine, though. I'm still watching the past, right? Mate, they're taking the interview now, mate. I'm not asking for your answers. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, but you, you look... Yeah, whoa, 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 you're under arrest for it. Because you're in a house on your own where there's drugs. So you're under arrest. Yeah. We'll come to the address. The knife on the side will match the description down to a T perfectly to what the witnesses have described. He's come to the front into the kitchen here. Uh, we can see him through the back. We've got officers at the front watching him. As you can see, there's some drugs already on the side that he's left out. There's some scales. He's got two phones on him and a bit of cash. Um, we're just seeing if there's, there's anything further at the moment. It's looking to be a decent result, even if the methods used were more than a little unconventional. Normally we'll use specialist method of entry kit, you know, the big red key, as some people see, uh, but the time that it would take to get that from, from the cars and get back, any drugs would be, would be long gone. So, as you saw, self and, and the sergeant um, used the, uh, the big right foot to, to put it in. Yes, it's not an approved technique, but sometimes you've just got to do what you've got to do. You've got to risk assess it, look at it, and go, like, it's actually quite a flimsy door. You know, are we really going to come to much harm? Probably not. So I think it's kind of worth the risk. Yeah, it's uh, worked well in the end. With the suspect loaded into a blue light taxi to the Nick, Joe and Dan go to work searching the rest of the house. I could hide things absolutely anywhere. Um, the options are endless, realistically, in a bedroom. It's got a lot of clutter, a lot of voids. So it's just trying to do things methodically and work way around. No drawer in the drawers or parked in the plant pot, but the high heels could be both Class E and Class A. So, oh, nice. Uh, looks like a lump of cocaine. Yeah, I'd say that's coke, uncut. With this as well as the other stuff inside and the scales, the chopping plate, I'd say is um, we've probably got enough now for an obsession with intent to supply, so um, that's good. We'll seize that and see what else we can find. Despite a thorough search, the boys don't find any more suspect packages. Even so, it's been a solid day's work with two teams of interceptors working in perfect harmony. You know, it's not often we work with knife crime, uh, but naturally by the, the nature of the work that they get involved in, the knife crime team, you know, there's the threat and risk when it comes to knife and it certainly bleeds into our world. They're a good bunch of people, good team. I, I like them all very much and it's great to work with them. There, there was no arguing about who's going to put the first boot into that door. Um, it's always the, uh, the sergeant prerogative feels to do it. You know, I am not going to argue with the man. Uh, I was just there just to put the, the final... The final nail in the coffin for the door, that was all. He did most of the hard work. No action was taken against the man for the suspected Class A drugs or knife, but officers later seized two bags of cannabis from another house connected to the suspect. He awaits his day in court for possession of a Class B drug. Still to come. Yeah, he's cracking it. Chaos on the dual carriageway. It's just stupidity, isn't it? And... Slip sliding and dressed for the slopes. Don't, I'm not running nowhere. Oh, he's gone, he's going. The force's best drivers are highly trained. Advanced driver, too bad. With nerves of steel. Hey, Jeff, straight through, I've got high risk. And know how to stick to a bad guy. <laughs> but more importantly, they know when a pursuit just isn't worth the risk. The more experience you get, you start to appreciate the wider view, you know, the, what risk is that posing to the public? Is it worth it at the end of the day? If they wanted for a minor offence, um, yet yeah, they're generally causing a risk to people's lives, then is it is it worth it? And it's hard to do that because we never like to get, let people get away. But if it's something very minor, we will abort pursuits and look to uh, minimise the risk to uh, everyone involved. A streak of blue is racing through reds as Dan and Macca light up Tuesday night in a Skoda VRS. 
four, we're still 52 towards the A46, but we are traveling. They are indeed to intercept a blue focus that's failed to stop for local cops. As we are now traveling, another Newark response cop has just shouted up saying he's seen it going back into Newark, but he, he's not created the suit, so he's got it. suggest the focus has been blowing reds and hitting speeds of more than 100 miles an hour. It poses a serious danger to other road users. Neil's behind, Neil's behind it. First to arrive in the Newark area is Sergeant Neil. He's in the unmarked Volvo when he clocks a car approaching full tilt. So pulls over for a closer look. Runaway Focus is absolutely flying and he's asking for a crash landing as he rockets onto a roundabout the wrong way. He's now heading northbound on the southbound carriageway. An approaching cop captures the terrifying moment the Ford takes off towards oncoming cars. Neil knows that following the Focus is now far too dangerous. So tracks the runaway from the correct side of the carriageway and waits for helicopter support. It's not till Neil hits 120 miles an hour that he catches sight of the suspect, who is hurtling towards the oncoming traffic at similar speeds. The outcome, unfortunately, is all too predictable. carnage on the carriageway opposite Neil lights up the night and signals disaster. Word soon filters through to Dan and Macca. Yeah, it's crashed, is it? It's the news they've been dreading. A hundred mile an hour head on with an innocent driver. Having swung the car round, Neil soon spots the wrecked focus on the grass verge. Somehow, its driver is out and running. And that's not the only miraculous escape. Luckily, the person who is here has got out of the, uh, got out of the vehicle. Dan and Macca navigates a rapidly forming tailback to reach the scene. 6486, and H, we need to put a roadblock on further back from where we've got it on at the moment. It's not safe. Having found a way through, they finally spot the focus. Jesus. To survive, let alone run away from a wreck like this, is beyond belief. To hit someone head on, on here, unlit, but you can see how far the other car is that he's hit, how far he's travelled. He's lucky to be alive. But we're just going to stay away from it at the moment because there's a dog travelling, and then hopefully they'll pick up a track uh, of where the driver's gone. With dogs and a chopper, the driver will need the night's second miracle to escape. We've got our camera, we're just trying to pick up these uh, outbuildings. Eyewitness reports have come in of two men acting suspiciously near a large shed on the other side of the field. <laughs> Dog handler Jen Els and canine cop Quantum are checking it out. Please, Please do the dog. And initial signs are promising. Dogs' noses are 10,000 times as sensitive as ours. Although there's no sign of the suspect, Quans can lock in on the scent they left behind. Wait. The driver must be close. And news soon comes over the radio. Two men have been apprehended. The cops suspect one is the driver. Then with him. They've got him anyway. Right, we're happy we can go and have a look at this car now, then. Yeah. I just feel for the member of the public that is it. It's just stupidity, isn't it? All for the sake of being arrested, and he's gone head on at someone at 100 miles an hour. And he's, uh, he's walked out of the vehicle without a scratch on him. It's just sheer luck. The innocent motorist has had a once-over from the ambulance crew and is thankfully unharmed. Meanwhile, the two men arrested, whose motives remain a mystery, will be facing some serious questions at the Nick.
driving the wrong way down the A46 on a dual carriageway at 100 miles an hour with a vehicle probably travelling up at 60, 70, closing impact of over 170 miles an hour probably, but the harsh reality of it is an authorised pursuit can end in absolute carnage where people could die. The cops carried out forensic tests on the wrecked Focus. Unfortunately, they couldn't prove that either of the suspects collared in the dark were at the wheel and no further action was taken. We could have been looking at two fatalities in there. The innocent member of the public, they could be dead. Why would you do it? Is he drunk? Is he on drugs? It just beggars belief, really. It's a peaceful summer shift, quiet enough for bird watching. Flip, is that seagull? God knows, seagulls are monsters, probably some of these fish and chips in your barbecue. <laughs> He's literally got some massive work. And firearms cops Paul and Lisa are spotting all sorts. Oh, flower picking, what's going on there? Aww. Some, some roadside flowers to take it into. That's quite cute. There are, bless him. But it's not all a bed of roses. Rush hour. And as the interceptors blue light to one job, another drops in their collective lap. Is this some guy on a motorbike without yeah. a bloody helmet? It's never a good idea to ride a motorbike without a helmet, especially if you ride one like this. Quick, quick, quick. Quick. Don't. I'm not running nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. As we're responding to this wanted male, there was a guy on a motorbike without a helmet. Um, he's come off it. He's absolutely fine. But we've stopped with this male now. See you there. You absolute there. idiot. You could have killed yourself. Oh, no. Do you know the maddest thing? I'll show you the messages. I've just... No, no, no. Oh. No. You could have killed yourself or hurt uh, someone else. I know. Lisa's a keen biker. And along with being an interceptor, that makes her an expert in reading roads and riders. I knew he'd react to our presence, even though we were going past him to go to something else. And my worry is, obviously, with being the driver, the fact that he's got no helmet in, I'm concerned that he's reacted, and he did. But fortunately, low speeds and the car in front balked him, and he's come off his bike. Uh, he just can't make it up. You see it happening before it's going to happen. Despite wearing no protective gear other than ski goggles in the height of summer, it looks like the rider has escaped with just a few scratches. How much you paid for it? Two fifty. But he's not escaping without Lisa laying down the law. Just bought it. You've hammered me, innit? Simple as that. I've just shown you. I've just bought it two minutes ago. Literally off that street there. And I've just shown you. I took my bike to tracks. I know, but do you know what it feels like to be a driver responding and seeing you and knowing what's going to happen there, and then seeing you falling off? Yeah, it's no, rush hour traffic. Honestly. I'm Oh, I'm not thinking. I bet you've hurt yourself, haven't you? No, yeah. Uh, exactly. Gravel rash, it's a real thing. Well, you caught me, it's what it is. We've caught you because of your stupidity at the end of the day. Yeah. You learn a lesson later. Well, you do, and I hope you have, because you could have gone under the wheels of a bus right there. It turns out the Alpine off-roader has neither licence nor insurance. Well, I'm glad it was low speeds, because that means I'm, that, I'm glad it was you know, we're not, we're not giving you first aid on the ground and I'm making sure you don't speed. die. Unfortunately for Gogglebox, just two minutes after he bought it, his new bike is being seized. The big thing for you will be the recovery cost is so he'll get a picture of that's 150 quid. Who's paying that? That'll come to you. You'll have to pay that. What now, that? No, not now, but if you want it back. Oh, so if you, don't, it, if you don't want it back, you don't have to pay it. I'll tell you. 50, keep it. All right, and then, but I'll tell you anyway, if you want it back, it'll be 150 quid for the recovery and then it's £25 a day thereafter, as of Monday onwards, and you couldn't pick it up until Monday. Keep it, keep it. I thought you might say that. Paul and Lisa report the rider for driving without a licence or insurance. There's three things they can do. They can either give you points, they can do nothing, or they can give you a fine. Who's that done? The um, central ticket office that deal with these um, offences. We can't, we don't do any more, we don't put in good words. Mate, you're riding on a road without an helmet on, and then you was going to bugger off. Into some, can you imagine if you'd gone onto that roundabout and gone onto the no. wheels of a car? That's why I fell off, because I heard you parking me down. But if it was coming for me, so I've swerved, didn't it? 
Come on, man. But you knew we were always going to stop you because you got no helmet on. Well, you got no helmet on. The once remorseful rider appears to be having a change of heart. I feel like swinging up on you lot, though, because you lot... What do you mean, swinging? No, I'm, I'm not even made, got close to you. But Lisa's having none of it. The bike. Yeah. It's all on the car. And you lot was tanking down that street while you watching up. Don't just raise your voice. Just keep, know, keep it up. I'm not even going to argue. You're in the wrong. I'm doing my job. Here, Nick, this is me. I haven't finished yet. You have to wait a minute. You're winding yourself up. I know I am. With the rider's mood taking a tumble, he's given the paperwork and sent on his way. They'll write to you about it, but that's what we need you for. Cheers. Thanks for stopping. See you, Ben. That was the most random thing I've ever come across. The thing is, we see it, we're on the way to something else, could yeah. be something uh, life threatening. And then, because he's been an idiot, we're then stuck here dealing with him when, you know, there could be somebody that genuinely yeah. needs our help, and we're not doing it. Apparently, it was all my fault because of the way I was driving, but I was responding safely um, to another job. But um, it's the realization to him that he's just purchased something he shouldn't be on, and he's lost it, so he was up and down. He may have tried to blame the cops, but Paul's just downloaded the dash cam from the Beamer. Silly man. I just did my dad voice, I went, don't. I <laughs> didn't hear that when you got out, and I was like, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. The off-roader dressed for off-piste was issued a ticket for driving without a license and no insurance, but later received no further court action. He might as well have just got his money out and burnt it. What did he say? 250. 250, yeah. Don't commit crime, no lads. No lasses. Still to come. It's currently a temporary loss. Apps and Mozza aren't playing catch up. We've got one of industrial units on site for the Leamington Estate. And on the M1, interceptors are a whisker from disaster. Side of the road on his uh, mobile phone and check instant whether or not vehicles insured, it's taxed, um, it's got an MOT, uh, and then that links in with the APR side of things. But you still got to rely on your uh, sort of your copper's nose, your gut instinct, because you'll find a lot of the time if you've got instincts, if there's something off, that's usually who it is, it's right, and just go with it. Two coppers with particularly fine noses are Charlotte Appleby and Adam Moroz. They've just picked up the scent of a red golf GTD. It's from Sheffield. I'm sure Sheffield as well. Yeah. The car's insurance checks out, but gut instinct tells Mozza it's worth a closer look. I'm going to go cut with one with this. Mozza spends his free time rock climbing and mountain biking. I obtained pursuits guaranteed to set the pulse racing. Yeah, pull him. It's one of the many reasons he loves riding shotgun with PC Appleby. Let's go in. Got a failed start. Got a 99 stop by. Spooked by the blues, the golf has shot off like a rocket. Go on, Silk Street. And the hot hatch has a few horses under the hood. 180 to be precise. Got a failed start, coming to the state, uh, six train drive, suitable vehicle. But whoever's at the wheel will need more than a fast car to lose an interceptor. It's left, 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 on to Twitchell View, uh, road condition to drive, oh no, not the in the vehicle, the reason to stop was the suspicious vehicle. Conditions may be dry, but it's a built-up area, and round here, Charlotte can't risk matching the golf for pace. Kilo six, driver is three five eight two Appleby. 
It happens so quickly, it's getting people in place at the right time and busy time of day. We were just fortunate, really, that members of the public were directing us which way it had gone because we'd totally lost it because the speed it was doing. The driver's done a proper David Blaine and vanished into thin air. I mean, where's he gonna have gone from here? Where people, cause loads of people here, so I don't see him. I don't know, unless he's gone over car parts, but. While other units in the area are put on red alert, Charlotte and Mozza check the motor for clues. That's like a in it at some point. Weed isn't the only dodgy discovery hiding in the golf. There's some plates in back of it. What's red on it? A second set of plates is a promising sign the golf's been cloned. So Charlotte runs a check on its VIN number. Yeah, that's just here, thank you. Yeah, stolen vehicle. It turns out the car was stolen the previous week in Gloucestershire, and the details of the theft make for grim reading. Whoever stolen it, they've used a crowbar to threaten the person whose car it was. Um, they've obviously taken the keys and then they've put these false plates on it. The golf was stolen in a violent attack before being cloned. There's a passport in the glove box, female details on it, the handbags are strewn on the floor as well, so a bit victim about it. The good news is that they've taken a stolen car from a criminal, but for now, the driver remains at large. I'd be happy if we'd caught him, uh, but we've got the car back, uh, stolen in quite a nasty robbery, down in Gloucestershire, where I've been threatened with a crowbar. I mean, it, it was rapid. Um, Charlotte's done well to keep up with it. Charlotte's done well to pass a bit of a description of him as his, uh, as his leg bit. So, he'll come again, we always do. Standby team. While some units train for armed raids, <laughs> and others tackle drugs gangs, decent sized bag of uh, Uncle Gail cracking heroin. It's the canny cops on the traffic teams whose tenacity keeps our roads safe. Vehicle stung, vehicle stung. It's midweek and a blizzard is blowing in across the county. There's still heavy snow off, is it? Uh, it's off With conditions on the M1 rapidly deteriorating, the roads police teams must be vigilant. Skelly and Haddon are tucked into the hard shoulder on a slip road. On the bridge up ahead, another unit have their lasers trained on the three lanes below. We've got an unmarked vehicle that's using the speed gun handheld uh, speed detection device, looking for speeders on the carriageway, and then ultimately we're going to move off and intercept those vehicles, deal with the drivers for any speeding offences. And you'll always have those drivers who are impatient, they're in a hurry, they're running behind, etc. Try and force a way through traffic, drive too close, and inevitably you end up with a, uh, a crash, which, to be fair, could be any time, um, looking at the conditions. But as it turns out, this is merely the storm before the calm. As sun replaces snow, a glint in the near side lane catches Skelly's eye. They're not going to cargo. Okay, we're just going to go and have that big HGV. You've just got a load of metal in it, no net over. A lorry with a loose load is cause for concern. So there's a big HGV, it's got like a skip container on the back, but it's got loads of objects protruding from it, like looks like loads of rolls of metal and bits and bobs, you can see it in the distance, um, in the near side lane, well it should have a cargo net over it, because obviously that's quite an unsafe load. 
Each year, tens of thousands of hazardous items are recovered from major roads, having fallen from unsecured vehicles. I mean, a lot of this stuff actually hanging out over yeah, the edge, yeah, yeah. down the sides. Craig, you're an MPN safe. With the lorry safely off the carriageway, Haddon goes in search of an explanation. Hey, mate, you all right? Have you got your license on you? My license is, uh, is DBLA. Put your shoes on, get your ID, and then come and come sit with us in the car, all right? He's got a lorry load of scrap and a license that's gone AWOL. This sounds like a job for Skelly. Before becoming a cop, Skelly was a welder and an insurance clerk. If it's a case of loose metal and dodgy paperwork, he's your man. Why have you got no net over your lorry? When they load me, they go what you call it's, uh, that barrier. Yeah. That's heavy stuff on the top. Right, but the stuff sticking out, you can't you can't have stuff sticking out like that, mate. If anything falls off, it's going to injure somebody. Oh, I know, I know. That, I mean, this but, is but, but it's your yes, yes, yeah, but it's your it's your responsibility. I to but they put a really heavy stuff on the top. Right. The driver appears to be shifting the blame onto whoever loaded the van. But as the man behind the wheel, it's up to him to ensure it's safe. So you're going to be dealt with at the roadside, OK? So I'm going to give you a ticket for carrying a load that's likely to cause danger, OK? While Skelly investigates the man's credentials, Haddon's been checking out his cargo, which makes for a troubling sight. It's all scrap metal and metal poles and all sorts, and it's all stuff that could... Uh, caught up in a bit of wind or if he goes over a bump and then it's going to cascade over the edge and then it'll cause serious injury and a collision to passing road users which is what we've had we've had something like this where it's come off got through the windscreen of a vehicle and unfortunately killed the driver so this is exactly the kind of thing we need to be stopping on the motorway is it all insured yes okay checks reveal that the driver is licensed and fully insured for the lorry but Haddon is baffled by his negligence the actual trailer has a net on it, doesn't it? So why, why if it's been built into the trailer, I'm mean, assuming is it a button you press and it pulls it over? So why haven't you covered it? I think not even. Right, so something in the back of your trailer, put the net over it. The man could be getting three points on his licence and a hefty fine. But if he sticks a net on his lethal-looking scrap, he's free to go. Uh, it's really annoyed me that, that the net isn't built into the trailer and he's not been bothered to do it. Yeah. Look how much more safer it is now. For the interceptors, a shift patrolling the M1 is many things, but it's never dull. The boys have just received an unexpected call from Phil Broughton. There is a schedule on the motorway because of the traffic on our shoulder. We just had a lot of comments and they can't find the car will stop. A few moments ago, two miles up the M1, interceptors Phil and Pierce pulled a taxi for speeding. And while Pierce spoke to the driver, shaves don't come closer than this. More than a hundred people are killed and injured on the hard shoulder each year. And having narrowly missed becoming one of them, Phil wants words with the lorry driver who's left the M1 at the next junction. By the time Skelly and Haddon arrived, the lorry driver's already been dealt with by Phil. We'll do with this gentleman for a uh, traffic offence uh, on the exit slip of the uh, motorway. Uh, whilst we've been parked where this uh, lorry decided to cross from lane one into the hard shoulder, missed us, but unfortunately took the front end of this uh, vehicle out and then carried on. So he's now been uh, dealt with for an offence to drive out to care and attention. So you can't give any reason on why he's crossed over. It is negative on breath test and all those other checks have been done. Uh, but it just goes to show, pretty much having your wits about you when you're on the motorway. Luckily, nobody's injured and it's damage only, but it could definitely have been a lot more serious than uh, what it was. The man's paperwork is all in order and he's free to go, but he's been left shaken by the near miss. Our job is, um, if you like, old-fashioned traffic, so we're making sure that all the motorists are safe. Um, 
team as a result of that. Sometimes our own safety um, obviously comes into question because we're at the busy, side of a busy motorway uh, on the hard shoulder or on some fast unlit roads, etc. etc. It's only by sheer luck that it's, uh, it's not ended in tragedy. The man was reported for driving without due care and attention. He got seven points and was fined £520. The scrap metal lorry driver received a penalty notice and the matter is now in the hands of the summary process unit. Still to come. So we've got one, two, three, four Bennett slices. The cop said someone's been telling porkies. You know if someone comes out of a shop running with a load of feet, you know, yeah. you know it's stolen, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. roast dinner, interceptors Rob and Dan have something else on the menu. Must be some way off, but so we are towards. They're in the unmarked, hunting a black Audi that's suspected of involvement in a shop theft. You may have passed, what's the details of the shop there? Is it, um, like clothing or food? There is meat from the cow -off. The stakes may not sound high, but a theft's a theft, whichever way you slice it. Oh, what's that lane? Two wrong. It's got silver wheel. There it is. And Rob has his meat pies on the suspect. We may have it hunting the street, just uh, stand by. As they pass, Dan clocks the Audi's plates. Yeah. Time for Rob to pull a Yui. Yeah, we've got it hunting the street outbound. It's uh, lane two. Second from pole outside the, the Lippers building. After a hard shift chasing bad guys, Dan likes to kick back with a Batman movie and a family box of fried chicken. Today, however, he's Rob's wingman. We're now fourth for cover. I think we're going to make some progress and uh, get it stopped. As the road opens up, Rob makes his move. Pops on the blues... And gets the desired result. Well, that's right, it's a stop stop. Pleased to meet you. How are we doing? Yeah, good. Good to meet you. Why don't you put it back for us? Yeah. What's your name? The driver's compliant and polite. And if you're polite to Rob, Rob's polite to you. Uh, have you got your license with you? I haven't, no. Have you got any ID? Passport's in the car. Passport? Yeah. Is, it, is it your motor? Yeah, yeah. You're all legit, insured yeah. and everything. Yeah. Smash it. All right. Uh, there's information on the vehicle to suggest that it's been involved in shop thefts. All right. So, we're going to check your details, yeah. find out who's driving it, uh, make sure there's no stolen gear in there, uh, and if everything's okay, you're on your way. Yeah. If there is stolen gear in there, and you're not okay. It really is that simple. I'm, I'd never go in a shop and give anything in my life, yeah. so... I'm, We've only been passing information just yeah. to suggest, I'd say it's just to suggest. Yeah. So this is now one part of stopping you is part of the inquiries to find out exactly what's happened. Meanwhile, interceptors are taking an interest in the Audi's front seat passenger. Have you been the shop? Have you been? No. Both men are pleading ignorance. Yeah. What's the name? Meat. Meat. So the time has come to have a butcher's in the boot. Shall we, uh, the big reveal? Nottingham's not seen this much raw flesh since the Chippendales came to town. So we've got one, two, three, four belly slices. Yeah, clearly there's a uh, substantial amount of meat in the back. Um, Clearly so been thrown in there. It's not flagged up with every seats, obviously. So um, I think they may be coming with us for the uh, shop there. We'll just get a description of who has been involved. It's up to three in the car. As luck would have it, a CCTV image of the alleged thief has just been emailed to the cops. It sounds like the supermarket sweep was performed by the front seat passenger. So you know that he ran out with a basket full of food? I think that's what he did, yeah. Chucked it in the roof. I don't want to get involved getting in trouble, you know what I mean? Right, because the issue we've kind of got is that if you're 
you know that that's what he's doing. But I didn't really know what he was doing, did I? I mean, I'm not... Yeah, yeah, I'm not like, I'm not really, but, but you're also not seeing me. I didn't know him, but I was The passenger is read his rights and will be heading off to the nick. Rob didn't fire up the coals just yet. Dan's got a much better idea. We've got photo of that. Yeah, it's all listed, itemised. Um, we're going to take it straight back. The meat is heading back to the supermarket. What's more, the driver's fate has been sealed too. You'll be free to go. Yeah. Um, ultimately, you need, you need to be careful. I need to stop mixing with people like this. You can socialise if you want to, but you know if someone comes out of a shop running with a load of meat, no, yeah. you know it's stolen, don't you? Don't want yeah. So ultimately, you've committed an offence by driving off and helping him out. Mm. You've done, you've done this, this fellow a favour by driving away. Um, the sergeant, thankfully, has decided to not complicate the matter yeah. and let you off with just a, a flea in your ear. Yeah. But it won't keep happening. Yeah. All right, I appreciate that. All right. I'll do it again. Yeah. Good. After a light roasting from Rob, Turn up. the driver's free to go. Uh, so, yeah, simple job, really. You know, man goes into shop, man steals meat, walks out and he's got a getaway driver it's, just, it's it's pretty simple you know the description that we've got from the witness at the store is bang on to that of the passenger so he's absolutely bang to rights uh, the driver a uh, bit of an odd one um, telling plenty of porkies um... <laughs> <laughs> he clearly didn't want to get in trouble with this whole thing and, and he let slip that he knew that the guy had been in there um, nicking the uh, nicking the meat um, Paul just didn't want to, suddenly didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, Sergeant, you know, he's made, I think he's made the right call. Let's not overcomplicate this matter. Let's deal with the person that's actually gone and stolen it, as opposed to just the getaway driver. After a grilling with the CCTV evidence, the offence of shop theft was withdrawn at court and he received no further action. Still, Rob's not about to mince his words. If he's caught again in similar circumstances, he'll be straight for the chop. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> Police interceptors are back new next Monday at 8. From daring search and rescue to criminal investigations, Coast Guard every second count starts brand new Sunday at 9. And tonight, all units are racing to the scene as late night revelers kick off after dark in Police Night Shift 999. Be next.